Okay, my name is Iris. I'll be your um, MC for this evening. But before we open up, I just want to open with uh, the president, Tato. If you have a few words to say before we start, that would be great. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As I've been introduced, my name is Tato Mahulani, and I'm fortunate enough to be leading the Africa Awareness Team for 2010. Um, I don't want to take up too much time because I know you're not here for me. Uh, I just wanted to welcome everyone for coming and uh, for taking the time out of your busy schedules to come and uh, support the Africa Awareness Initiative. Our cause is trying to increase academic curriculum here at UBC, and part of our Africa Awareness Week is trying to garner support um, to try and make sure that uh, we have people who are aware of what our initiative is about and trying to engage our institution, our university in coming up with a strategy for an African academic curriculum here at UBC. So part of what we'll be doing this whole week is trying to, to, to pull together the support and show the institution that there is a demand and there is a need for a strategic vision uh, in terms of an Af African academic curriculum here at UBC. So that is our work. If you want to know more about that, I will be here afterwards. But I welcome everyone and uh, I look forward to, to the mayor's talk. A lot um, of good has been said about him that he's a good speaker, so I'm looking forward to that. Thanks again, everyone, and uh, enjoy the evening. Thank you. So I'll go straight into it and introduce our speaker, Mayor James Ntebe. Very um, interesting man. Uh, I read his biography the night, yes, last night, and there was so much to say, and you know, putting it all together, I couldn't do it. But um, let me just say, he's one of those people who's very warm, down to earth, uh, and is ready, you know, has that smile ready for you, which is, I think, is good. It's a good thing. And um, although he is one of the few African residents in the city of Mission, BC. Uh, Tebe origi originates from the Gibi tribe in the town of Kisi, which is Western Kenya. Uh, he is embraced wholeheartedly by the people of Mission BC. In fact, he is their mayor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Prior to this, he was acti actively involved in the community by serving two terms as the city councillor after a, div a, a diverse career in city planning and economic development. He moved to Canada when he was accepted into the University of Calgary in 1979. Why not University of British Columbia? I don't know. <laughs> but nonetheless, he arrived in Calgary, graduated with the Bachelor of Arts in Geography, and became a cartographer in an oil co company. Itching for more adventure, he left the predictability of that job and did a master's degree in city planning and transferred to the University of Washington, just south of the border. Just like his father, he was interested in issues of economic development and land use and found work in the city of Camor near Banff, Alberta, as a town planner. An opportunity to work as an, as an economic development officer for community futures uh, Development Coordination in Mission BC brought him, his Canadian wife Valerie, a librarian he met at the University of Calgary, and their three children uh, to this side of the Rockies. Mm. After two years, he took a job with the Social Solo Nation, a tribal council of 19 local Aboriginal bands, as their economic development officer. Naturally, he epitomizes Africa awareness's, uh, Africa Awareness Initiative's dream of involving Africa in the creation of global citizens. Um, as our title for this talk is um, Innovating Minor Groups in Building Global Communities, Mayad Atebe is a perfect example. As the winner of the top 25 Canadian immigrants in 2009, he said, I attribute my success to the communities I have, lived, uh, I have lived in like mission. It is the communities who give me the opportunities to be able to grow as a person, as a, per, as, as a professional, and to contribute. However, institutional barriers exist. Mayor Entebbe is a man who, was, who has faced a fair share of opposition as mayor because of his vision of a more complete community in his town.
which was ingrained in him by his parents, who were both community builders and visionaries. But despite barriers, we can see how institutional changes can come about and how minority groups can make a difference. Similarly, the Africa Awareness Initiative can also be such a change maker. With strong support, motivation, and dedication, we can become part of a movement to create better systems and and institutions to help minorities play a part in Western societies like Canada and global communities. Now, without further ado, please help me in, uh, in, in welcoming Mayor James Atebe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Harris. I think that was, uh, that was too generous. <laughs> uh, too generous. I, I don't know. I, I thought you were reading about somebody else. I didn't think it was me, but uh, I appreciate that uh, uh, introduction and uh, welcome. Uh, before I do anything else, I just want to say, ladies and gentlemen, I am extremely... Uh, appreciative of the executive for the African Week, UBC African Week Awareness Week initiative to invite me to come and be part of this, this uh, event. I believe it's an extremely, extremely, extremely important event. When Felix and the Sita, is it Sita? Sita, where is Sita? She's, she probably she's out there. When they came to my office in Mission and asked me whether I should be, I, I could be able to be part of this event, I said, absolutely, I would like to be. And then I didn't realize, usually, I don't organize my plan. Somebody tells me where to go, and I go there. I never question that. And when I went back and let the staff know, I realized that I, I had completely double-booked myself. Because there was another, I am a, a, a president of the Lower Mainland uh, African, uh, no, Lower Mainland Local Government Association. That's uh, communities from Hope all the way to Vancouver to Pemberton in Whistler. That uh, I am the president and uh, I represent them at UBCM, which is the union of all municipalities in BC. And uh, we have a monthly meeting that we meet and uh, we, was scheduled this week at the airport and uh, some of the committee meetings that I was supposed to be involved and chairing were happening this afternoon. So I called uh, the press and I said, please, I want to be part of this. I want to be excused to be here at 4 o'clock. So at 4 o'clock they let me go and I was just panicking, wondering whether I'll be able to get here on time. I'm, I apologize for being a little bit late, but I'm here because I wanted to be here. Yes, I would like to call the president, Tatu, and the ESA executive, because uh, when Felix came to my city, I did uh, ask him that in, in order to support this movement in, uh, at UBC, I wanted to make, uh, ask my city council to make uh, a proclamation, a proclamation that recognizes what is going on here on, uh, at University of British Columbia. So on Monday, I did ask my council to make that resolution. I want to present that resol- uh, proclamation here. If uh, Tatu, you can come here. The proclamation reads, this is how it reads. It says, whereas the University of British Columbia African Awareness Initiative is a student-run organization whose mission states, uh, statement is involving Africa in the creation of global citizens. And whereas the UBC African Awareness Initiative 
provides a forum of British Colombians to learn about the experiences of black Canadians in our society and the vital role this community has played throughout our shared history. And whereas Black History Month celebrates the involvement of black people and their achievements during which fellow Canadians have, a, have an opportunity to learn more of the black people's experiences. And whereas we applaud and commend the citizens of British Columbia, the faculty and the students of the British or of University of British Columbia for their dedication and the commitment to the causes of African Awareness Initiative and which wish to them continue success. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the District of Mission hereby proclaims the month of January to be observed as an African Awareness Month in the District of Mission. We further urge all citizens and, the, and the establishments to give the UBC African Awareness Initiative the greatest possible support. Let us make the world a better place for all of us. Signed by the Mayor James Ateve, proclaimed by this, the Council of District of Mission. I just want to represent this. Before you go, I also thought that as you continue on promoting, promoting this event, the years to come, I have provided a certificate. If you have a little office, office here, if you don't have an office, ask the, 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 the faculty <laughs> to have an office. Uh, I've said here, the mayor, that's the mayor of District of Mission, takes pleasure in presenting this certificate of recognition to the UPC African Awareness Initiative and the Organizing Committee for your important contribution, contributions to promote promoting of social, economic, and cultural opportunities in the African continent. Thank you. Signed by Mayor James Atebe. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I definitely, again, believe that I'm extremely privileged and humbled to be among you here just to demonstrate a little bit of support to what you're doing, because what you're doing is very important. I believe it's extremely important. As a background, RS did give you my detailed bio, and I have to tell you that at 13 years old, that's when I chose that I was going to come to, the, to, to North America. I, was, uh, I went to a missionary school, a Catholic school, we, at that time known as Bishop Otunga High School, and eventually changed its name to Kano Otunga High School. And at that missionary school, every Sunday I watched movies. They showed us movies, and I watched uh, the Cowboys and Indians movies, and at that time I chose that I want to come to North America because I was curious and I had the hunger to explore and understand those two cultures, the cowboys and Indians. And from then on, I chose to walk towards that end, towards that goal. At 19 years old, 19 years old again, I went back to my mom and dad. I said, I would like to go after that opportunity. And I was fortunate enough to get that opportunity. When I arrived here, I left home. I knew two weeks prior to leaving that I was going to be coming here. I didn't have a friend. I didn't have a family. I just packed my pajamas and <laughs> decided I was going to come here. I arrived at Calgary. September 9th, 1979, at, at, at one o'clock in the morning. I didn't know which direction to go to get to the campus, but I, I 
because of very generous and very caring and passionate ladies who knew me, who didn't know me at all, strangers, they took me from the airport, took me to the campus, took me to my, ha my, my, my room, and made sure that I was safe. You know, from then on, I realized that my dream was well placed because to start with that kind of welcome and care, I realized that uh, I, this is a place I'm going to explore and understand. And that curiosity has propelled me to what you see me, to the person you see today. So I have to say that part of it, part of my, that, that desire to learn, to learn, to know other, other cultures, is what exactly the, this initiative is all about, to bring awareness not awareness only of, our, of what we are capable of doing, but awareness of issues in Africa and how we can bring solutions to those, to those, to those issues that are there. I have to say that I have had an opportunity to, to speak a lot about during the Black History Month, that's February, I find that that's another initiative, just like the African Awareness Initiative mm -hmm. in, in, at UBC, the Black History Month is, does exactly the same role, plays the same role as what you're doing here, because it gives us an opportunity again to be able not only to celebrate and recognize the contributions mm -hmm. of many, many Africans whether it's in the, within the African continent or outside of that continent, which most people have coined to, be, to, to come to know as diaspora people. We believe that by bringing awareness and speaking proudly with pride, a lot of pride, about the achievements that those who are in, the, in Africa now and those who have been in Africa in the past and those who will be coming in Africa and those who have moved out of Africa who live elsewhere in the world, if we speak and recognize and praise and sing about their achievements and, the, and their accomplishments, it will make us not only a stronger people, but it will also make our society far more peaceful, far more accommodating, far more inclusive. And I will tell you, probably, there won't be as many challenges for those who follow our footsteps, like when I did in 1979, coming alone here, feeling lonely for, for many, many, many years, and then all of a sudden getting to, to, to learn to, be, to, to, to accept it, to live here very comfortably. But if people can, if we can bring that awareness that people can feel included and, in, and they feel comfortable wherever they are, it doesn't matter, it will open a lot of opportunities. A lot of opportunities, not only for the Africans, their descendants, but opportunities for other people from all backgrounds all over the world because they will want to not only if continue on to further the I want uh, I want uh, I want uh, I want uh, dreams of wanting to be to be known and defined and be 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 characterized the way we want to be characterized but you will find that there will be opportunities because people will want to not only go back to the continent of Africa to live and work and play and do whatever they want to do the opportunities that will be there but they, even here, there will be opportunities because some of us, we will find jobs and positions where we will be furthering the, the understanding and the knowledge of that, that, that very, very beautiful but complex continent. Why should, why awareness? Why should we promote awareness? 
why are the executives impact on promoting awareness? I believe that I, as an individual, you as an individual, your neighbor, your friends, have a responsibility. You have a responsibility. And that responsibility is, first of all, we need to be able to research and understand Africa as a continent first. And then try to explain it, particularly those of us who, have, who, are, who are born and there, our friends who, are, who love it and want to, to, to visit it. We need to find a way of defining Africa in a way that is positive rather than the way the media, perhaps the media looks at it. Because the definition and, the, 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 and the, what I find is that as a young boy growing in Kenya, in Kisi, I thought I was very rich. I, I, I honestly never thought that we were poor. Huh? Somebody else might have defined us as poor. I felt rich. I knew I, my heritage. I was very proud of that heritage. I knew my history. I was very proud of that history. I had friends. I had relatives. I had extended family. I had schoolmates. And uh, frankly, I remember even when going to church where they would tell me we should do fundraising because there's people elsewhere in the world that live in a cold countries and all that. They don't have shoes. We should fundraise and send shoes to them so that they, can, they don't have to freeze. Yeah? You know? And we did. I went to a seven-day Adventist church, and we did. We fundraised. We put money together to buy shoes for people who, who were living in poor countries, not in, not in Kenya. Kenya wasn't poor. It wasn't until I came to, to, to North America, <laughs> arrived in North America, and then I, all of a sudden, looking on the TV, all I saw was uh, a definition of Africa that was very poor, a definition of Africa that was very dry, a definition of Africa that was extremely uh, impoverished, a definition of diseases. And, and I'm not saying that those challenges are not there. They are there, but we grew up not understanding that that was... Because, yes, where else? You can go anywhere in this world. If I choose to, I choose to carry my camera on, uh, on my back and they start to go to, the, to every, various, uh, various uh, uh, neighborhoods in, uh, in Vancouver, I can find the, the, the most deprived neighborhoods and I put them on the, on the TV. And if that's what I... Will that define Vancouver? Will that define Canada? Will that define... North America. It won't because there is those challenges, we have them. But we gotta find. I am kind of a guy who comes from uh, the glass is half full. I never really find the glass being half empty because I've never felt that way. I always, every, every event I go, every task I wanna do, I wanna go in there and wanting to know what. Is it that is positive about the, 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 the task that I'm, I'm going to do? I don't want to be, be, be reminded or be bogged down by what is wrong with the task. I want to find what is right with the task. What are the opportunities that the task I'm undertaking will provide for me, for my neighbors, for my children, for my, ch my neighbor's children, what will that, what, what are those opportunities? Because every time I, I, I dwell, I have, I, have, I have tried that. Once in a while I've tried that to just look at the, the negative. I go, oh, I have problems. Oh, I have problems. If I dwell on that, I get tired. I never get to do the job. So I go into the project and say, what are the opportunities? What, can, what is it that can we get out of this task that will benefit not only me, the third party, or the, all the other parties that are concerned? What will be that opportunity? I think if we look at that, 
and as and the positive side, the glasses are half full, we will always find that we will discover opportunities. And for me, that's the most, the one thing that I've found, that if I had to look at the way Africa has been defined, let's say, through the eyes of the media, it is the glass is always half empty. It's not. Frankly, it's not, because I know that... Uh, Take, the, take, for instance, leadership. What do you see on movies, on, I mean on TV, on news, what do you see? Either you see people, either there's a civil war going on in a community, an organization, or either they're f emphasizing and focusing on corruption, or how corrupt people are in Africa, or they are focusing on a, some kind of... A, 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 somebody who's, uh, who's really a dictator or does, who, doesn't, who doesn't consult. But ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you that for me, when I grew up as a young kid in Kenya, there were people, leaders in that country that I looked forward to and I emulated and I wanted to follow. I look at, for instance, Chomo Kenyatta. He was a leader. Some people, people always sit back and they look at... Uh, the flaws of individuals. But I look at that individual, if you take the, have two ledgers, the positive and the negatives, and you look at it, that gentleman, I believe still, he defined what I would like to be when I grow up. That was a, an excellent leader. There is other leaders that w have taken us. You, look, you go back to people like Kwam, Kwame Nkrumah, who, who was a philosopher. They, some, towards the end, people criticized him because of uh, economic uh, problems that happened in Africa, but in Ghana. But guess what? If you go back and look at his leadership, his philosoph philosophical, there is no any other leaders who were, who were as visionary as the, that gentleman when he was preaching the, the Pan-Africa approach of to, uh, solving problems, Pan-Africa approach of, uh, of trying to govern, uh, govern, govern a people. We've got Nelson Mandela, yeah? A, a, a gentleman that anybody all over the world have a, I've got a lot of respect. That's, those are leaders. Why is it that those kind of leaders yeah, don't become a profile on our day and today information at our, at our t t living rooms when we're watching news? I think that those kind of things needs to be right center left everywhere. And that's what I see that the African Awareness Week, African Awareness Month, African Awareness 360 days a week, a year, could do, could achieve in terms of really focusing on, uh, on those kind of people. And yet Africa has produced, look at, uh, we've got the President of the United States. Huh? <laughs> He's a product of the African heritage. You look at people like, if you look at the, the Dalai Lama and the combined with the, uh, uh, Desmond Dudu, those guys, they, they are all equally, in terms of philosophers, spiritual philosophers and guide stewards who are guiding us with the philosophical. There is a, a man, Desmond Dudu, when he, he speaks, the spiritual world listens. And yet we've got, not only in, a, in, a, in, a, in political leadership or governance, but we, you can go into, edit, into, into culture, whether it's musicians all over the world. You can go towards looking at, uh, not only that, recreation or, 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 or sports, sporting events. And you look at, there is leaders in there. But there is leaders even at everything we do daily. You can be a leader on your own right, whatever you're doing, whether it's as being a student leader here, whether it's a small club you're doing, whether it's a, you are creation, your recreation, or whether it's a social event you're doing, your leadership, what you provide 
and how you conduct yourself and how you, pr you, you pr present yourself, I believe that ends up contributing towards defining Africa, defining the, 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 the contributions of Africa, not only to, 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 to a, a campus like uh, UBC, but to a city like in Vancouver, to a province like BC, or to a nation like in Canada. And it defines us. It defines our contributions. It defines the heritage to the rest of the world. And that's why I'm very, I found this event to be extremely profound that I should be here and sharing with you. I'm a city planner by profession. That's what I do. I enjoy doing that. And I really enjoyed doing that until I lost my head and then ran for politics. Mm -hmm. yeah. Professionally, city planning and the community development, community building, community design, that's what I love. I look at, as soon as, if you ask the kid at high school or a kid at, uh, at elementary school here, Probably, the way they will define Africa would be probably either slums, they'll, that's how they will relate to Africa, or grass-touched buildings. That couldn't be farther away from the truth when you look at Africa, what Africa is. Because Africa is a very complex a continent, you vary from, yes, they, they roofed, grass-touched roofs, uh, I mean uh, houses, that's how I grew up, that's where I grew in. I still, when I get back to, to, to Nairobi, I say, I want to go back to the country. I go right to that, uh, that grass-touched uh, house, and I, I spend my, my time there with my grandparents, with my, my uncles and aunts, because I think that that is part of the, the, the complexity of Africa. And yet, you can go right into the slum area where you can live there and this life that goes on here. And yet, you can go to a really sophisticated, modern housing and shelters in, in, in Africa. But why doesn't that get defined and characterized that way in the eyes of the media, in the eyes of, uh, of, of everything? Because if we have to be fair, if we have to bring awareness, all that complex and complete picture needs to be given to the people. And that's why I think that by what you're doing here, it will have opportunities for people to, to really understand that there is that complexity. It's a range, a continuum of existing environment, which is no different than when I came here, Ladies and gentlemen, I said I wanted to be a cow. I wanted to come and live with cowboys and Indians. The first time I arrived here, I took a job. I said I'm gonna be a cowboy. <laughs> That's what I did, and for three years I was a cowboy in southern Alberta, wearing every, during summertime I wear my shafts and my cowboy hat. My I get my horse every morning at six o'clock. I could get out into the fields, into the hills, and uh, ride my horse and uh, and look after cattle. There was about three thousand head of cattle there that I went and chased around. Sometimes it would be rain. You hit your lunch under the willow trees, and and then it's raining. But you know that was great. It was. I enjoyed it. If they paid me enough, I wouldn't want. I wouldn't have liked to be mayor. I would have liked to continue on being a cowboy. Huh? But you know, when you look at it, that's that. If you look, you go to that countryside where there's cowboys and a cowboys culture, and you look at it. It is a continuum from there all the way to Vancouver, the culture that you do here. That's how complex even in Canada is. Because rural, is a, rural Canada is, it could be just as uh, the distance between rural and urban in Canada could be almost the same as distance that we have rural in Kenya to, to rural urban. So they, I think for me, we need again to become ambassadors 
to, that defines and provides provides that uh, uh, that understanding of Africa as a continent as a, as a very complex a complex complex entity. I personally believe that we need to be the champions of that. We need to advocate. We need to tell people that Africa, ranging from rural to urban Africa, is far complex than the simple little image that the media puts in front of everybody's, uh, in, a, in everybody's uh, 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 living room, and the people tend to, to live that. What a better place to have that kind of advocacy, that kind of championship, that kind of uh, uh, disciple, discipleship to, 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 to bring that awareness. I think that a place like UBC is where you do that. You begin that. It's a place of learning that is open for, for all those different perspectives. As I was looking at that, there is, uh, in addition to, to, to all this fiscal environment that we define as society, I look at the rich, wealthy attributes of culture, values that Africa has contributed, not only to Africa itself, but to the world, that Africa has given a, as a gift to the world starting from not only fashion, dress, and, but you have to go and look at the, 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 the dance, the music, the food, because I, I enjoy, when I come to Vancouver, I just want to be able to go where there's an Ethiopian restaurant where I can go and get a, get a little bit of, 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 of the taste of that. And it, by that sharing that kind of, a, of a, a heritage of a food, that alone, I am amazed that based on that, you end up telling people, not only through the, the economic institutions or political institutions, but through culture and heritage, we can actually reach out and get people to appreciate that. And Canada is a good, good, environment to do that because Canada has embraced multiculturalism. Canada has embraced diversity. Canada has embraced inclusiveness. So I think that what we need to do is being bold enough to say that we're going to go out and promote those, those, those events because there is other cultures, there is other countries that you wouldn't have that opportunity to be able to, to, to not only embrace the nation, your own home, Canada as your new home, but they also you are given the opportunity to be able to promote and develop and the heritage and culture that comes with it. And there is no any other way to do it other than have people who develop the, organ the capacity and the organizing capacity like uh, the African Awareness Committee that sits here in, in, in this institution and it decides that they're going to spend time, invest time and uh, energy and uh, passion so that they can bring awareness. I would like to see more of this kind of organization from town to town, from city to city, which gives a forum and opportunity not only to showcase the knowledge and the and body of knowledge like what you're doing, but to showcase our own heritage and culture, to showcase the languages. Because right now there's other communities, I look at the First Nations in, a, in this country who are fighting to try to rev revive their languages. If we are not careful, I mean, you want to be able to promote the languages because the language has also linguistic, the linguistic values as, a, as, as value in terms of really continuing on to make, to, 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 to encourage people to exist as a people, defi defining them. Those are the kind of things. Sometimes I feel a little bit embarrassed because I have been here, my kids have grown here in Canada. They can't speak Swahili very well. 
And I look at it, I've been negligent. I personally feel that way. They, these kids should continue on learning a little bit about the, the language. Because by extending that language, it continues on to define Africa in, in perpetuity. I wanted, to, I want to just first of all to, 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 to touch a little bit uh, the opportunities we have in terms of continuing you know, to bring in awareness. I hope that institutions like UBC will see fit not only promote awareness of African contributions to this country, to this continent, as well as promoting what the Africa contributes towards the, the African people in their own homeland. And there are very many ways of doing that. You could develop courses here that basically, and they, by developing those courses, encourage faculty exchange, where you would have people, there's, there's a lot of universities in Africa that you'll find a faculty who would want to exchange, come here and teach for, for a year, two years, three years, and develop that awareness. You could have student exchange where you actually invest money and say, I want students to go to Africa. I want the students from Africa to come here and, uh, to do, for a year, just the exchange. They could be something like that. They could be research chairs. Huh? You could establish research chairs which really focus on uh, African studies and develop uh, curriculum and uh, courses that, that go with that. But I also, I believe that as individuals, we have a responsibility. And that responsibility may include exactly what Tato, Iris, and those who are involved, Felix, Sida, those who are involved with this promotion, that we extend these kind of awareness to the community at the community level, not only at the campus level. And that means Folks, sometimes it's going to commit resources. Sometimes you're going to commit your time. Sometimes, but organizing forums, whether it's a, and I've attended some of the forums where you have a, a community organizations say that try, promoting culture, promoting uh, festivals, promoting uh, all kinds of manner of uh, of uh, Africanness in the community. And that could be one way of also extending that. Hmm? I personally believe that uh, also you could even go ahead and uh, indicate in terms of uh, wherever you are to feel comfortable with your heritage, to be proud of that heritage so that you don't give mixed messages to anybody else that that heritage is less than it doesn't have to be less than. It has to be equal and included, that just like every, every other. That's what Canada is. Canada. Do. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, I feel that for me, I am very lucky that I was born in, in Africa. I am very lucky that I got a chance not to, to, to live elsewhere, but not in Africa. I am very lucky to be able to represent and become an ambassador of African heritage while I'm embracing my new found home, which is Canada, because Canada is my, home, my, my country now. Huh? I love it. And I would like to be able to contribute to this country however much as possible. But I want to be able to say that I still wouldn't want to give any mixed messages to anybody that I am not as proud being African and I'm not as proud of Africa as I am proud of Canada. Because you both, you can have both. I have 
asked my children, my children who have grown here, they've gone to university here, I have let them know that they need to, be, to find themselves very privileged, privileged because they have two, uh, they have, uh, two heritages, Canadian and, uh, and, and, and African. And if you look at it from that perspective, and then make sure, become the, uh, for me, I would almost call it a watchdog, to make sure that the, your people, whether it's the media, whether it's anybody, they're giving a balanced, a balanced picture. They are not overing a very quick, sometimes very sensationalized image that in a way becomes more damaging than it explains. I have actually a very short, maybe it's a nine, a nine minute uh, uh, clip here that I wanted to, I w as I do uh, stuff on the, on the media, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the internet, just like everybody does, uh, I came to uh, across uh, something about uh, the Africa that 